Hello and happy Christmas Eve. Welcome to St Michael and All Angels carol service. If you've never been to St Michael's before or maybe you're connecting for the first time, we're so pleased that you decided to watch this. I'm Richard and this is Catherine and together we lead the church here. Now whilst we're celebrating Christmas differently this year, the central event that we're remembering hasn't changed. Jesus coming to earth as a child, God becoming human. And through the carols, the readings and the messages, we pray and hope that you will discover and remember the true joy that can only be found in Jesus. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can still gather regardless of our circumstances and that you can give us joy regardless of our circumstances. Would you lift up our eyes, Lord, to just encounter you afresh today as we gather together to remember the gift of Jesus, the giver of joy. Would you restore our joy to us? Amen. The reading comes from Isaiah chapter nine, verses two to seven. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of the deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest, like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and will lift the burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms blood-stained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heavenly of the lord's heavenly armies will make this happen
This reading is from chapter 1, verse 76-79, and you, my child, will be called a, a prophet of, of the Most High, for you will go on before the, the Lord. The pearl, this pearl, prepare to wait for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender, tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to sing, shine. shine on the living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide, guide, guide us uh, feet into the path of peace. Yeah. yeah.
The reading is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 15. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first sentence that took place while Quirinius was a governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he was of the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angel had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. This is the word of the Lord.
Christ is born, Christ is born, Christ is born for you. Christ is born, Christ is born, Christ is born. Father, we thank you for all of the local charities working in our area, reaching out to so many people uh, in the background, often unseen. Would you bless each of those individuals working for those organisations and draw them closer to you this Christmas time. Amen. Father, we thank you for the children and young people in our community here in Twerton. Please, would you watch over them during this holiday time, away from the routine and security of school and college. For those where home is a happy, safe and secure place, we thank you. For others where life is more difficult, please bring peace. The message the angels brought to Mary and the shepherds, don't be afraid. We pray over the youngsters in our community this Christmas. Don't be afraid. Emmanuel, God is with you. Amen. I pray everyone who is vulnerable or feeling isolated can have a good Christmas and will feel lots of love from Jesus. Amen. So let's join together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. How good are we at waiting? I know for me, it doesn't come naturally. In fact, actually it's quite the opposite. Preferring to run rather than sit, tending to haste than to submit to the timing of another. But what's the point of waiting? In this instant grab-go culture, why delay? Why abstain? Why the decision to remain content when surely chasing in this rat race is the only way to keep the pace and keep me satisfied? No one likes a queue, online, on phone, in person. It seems we've queued a lot of late, outside shops and schools, but the one I hate is waiting on that phone line when you are called a 99 and all you need is a Big Mac. When you're waiting for a vaccine, the job you need, or some other semblance of peace, in fact, just put me in a time machine and fast track me beyond this quarantine of COVID-19 and all that's held us back from fun and set us free to chase and run, but we're called to wait. The thing is, I don't know if I can. When it hurts and it aches, when the result of a scan is looming and my head is just booming, when I'm waiting for permission, a decision or a verdict, when I'm waiting on a promise and I'm doubting if I heard it, when I'm holding out for my heart's desire or the thing I've always hoped for, but round every single corner I'm just faced with a shut door. When I've asked and asked again and my asking runs dry and my resolve starts to bend, how do I wait when I've been so disappointed? Is my waiting all in vain? Is there a time that's appointed for him to answer me, for a yes to my plea? But I wait and I will wait because I'm called to and because he did first. Yes, God the Son came to this earth to love, to serve and to lay down his all. He, the God man, chose to give up his right, to race ahead and just ace the fight. In all he did, he submitted to the timing and direction of the Father in heaven. And us in turn, yes, this is the call, to surrender, submit and to lay down our all. For our God in heaven, author of time and space, requires us to let him set the pace. For us to trust, let it be understood that he is God and that he is good. 
and our waiting is good. It grows us, shapes us, and moves us beyond the monotonous. So as we surrender to his timing, for the ultimate goal to which our souls are pining, when the son of God, who died to save, will one day return to this earth again. And when he does, there'll be no more pain, no more sin, and no more shame. You see, this is what the father is offering. Life eternal, life everlasting. Life with him, where we won't be asking what comes next. Because don't you see, face to face with the king, our lives will be complete. There'll be no more waiting, no more anxious hesitating, because every tear he'll wipe away, and at his name we will proclaim, he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and at his name we'll bow the knee, and at his name we'll truly see that all the waiting of creation, all the groaning, all the moaning will be swallowed up in victory, as Jesus face to face will see. So let's wait for heaven and his kingdom come, because that's the best that's yet to come. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd heard and said to them but Mary treasured at all these things and pondered them in her heart the shepherd returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had had and seen which was just as they had been told. Has anyone ever given you good news? We had good news recently, didn't we, of the COVID vaccine? I think we've been learning this year uh, to appreciate things that we might have taken for granted in the past, whether that be birds and nature or uh, the ability to, to buy things from the shop uh, and appreciating uh, just the little things, maybe even appreciating the neighbours that we uh, live next door to. But... Uh, more than more than anything else, I think many of us have appreciated those who have uh, been working through throughout this pandemic on the front line, particularly the the NHS staff, and we pray for for any of you who are uh, working over this Christmas period, uh, putting yourself at risk to um, serve and look after those who need uh, need need help. The angels uh, in one of our readings bring good news to the shepherds and it says uh, that they they said fear not for behold uh, we bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Good news of great joy. That sounds good news. Uh, news with joy in it is always good to hear uh, but this is good news of great joy for all the people. So I wonder what uh, brings you joy. Where have you found joy this year? Here is one example of a four-legged friend uh, finding joy or dreaming of joy.
should say this is in no way an endorsement of Microsoft. There are plenty of other technology companies you can go to, um, but uh, I just thought it was a, a, a lovely uh, example of, of what a dog's dream of joy uh, looks like. Now, Christmas is a time of joy for many people, but there, there are some who find this time uh, extremely difficult. And it is uh, more so than ever before this year going to be difficult for so many. Uh, maybe those who are single, uh, who don't have a, another bubble household to form and join with. Um, but also those who perhaps are spending Christmas in hospital. Uh, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones this year. Christmas is always going to be one of those uh, bittersweet moments. And there is a line in a famous carol that says, The weary world rejoices. The weary world rejoices. And I want to look tonight at uh, how we can experience joy in the midst of a pandemic. How can a COVID world experience joy? And what is this joy that the angels spoke of to the shepherds? It was good news for all people. I believe it has something to do with the foundations that we build our lives on. Recently I was uh, speaking with my mother-in-law's builder uh, my mother-in-law has been uh, been redeveloping her kitchen. Uh, she's got a ground floor extension and uh, is having a new kitchen put in. And some structural work was being done and they had uh, stripped away some of the paving outside the, the, the house and so that the, the foundations were exposed. And I asked the builder, is it possible to build above this ground floor extension it's only one story at the moment. And he said, well, uh, it depends on the foundations. But we've had a look uh, as we've been clearing things away. We've noticed uh, that uh, the foundations go quite deep. So, yes, it probably would be possible to build another story. And this uh, came to mind as, as I was reflecting on joy. You know, that there are different kinds of joy we can experience, aren't there? And, and some joy um, is built on shallow foundations. Uh, it's kind of single story joy, as it, as it were. But if we want uh, uh, to build a new story, if we want to, to have, uh, have a new story of joy in our life, uh, I believe that, that we are going to need to have uh, stronger, deeper foundations. And it's this foundation that Jesus brings. Jesus himself, uh, the Bible describes as the cornerstone, the solid, firm foundation for our lives. But so much of our lives are built on shallow uh, sources of joy, shallow foundations. You may have found this year that some of the things that you relied upon, the things that you uh, had become attached to, uh, were exposed as being very fragile. It may be that relationships uh, that, that you um, looked to uh, were restricted because you weren't able to see the people you loved. It may be that uh, you had put your hope in your job and that the foundation of your life was built upon your ability to uh, earn money and provide. It may be that, uh, that you had built your foundation on on the ability to stay healthy and well, and maybe you got ill. Maybe you know others who became ill. Maybe it caused anxiety for you uh, that you might get ill. Whatever the foundations you'd been building your life on, uh, suddenly we're realising that they're not as strong as we thought they were. And so when the storm of a pandemic comes along, or, or it might be any other storm in our life comes along, we realise that the foundations that we've been building on are not strong enough to sustain us and to sustain the joy that will carry us through. I believe Jesus brings a, a Jesus joy uh, that, that is only built upon him. You see, Jesus joy is the kind of joy that carries us through 
the valley of the shadow of death. It's not intimidated by evil and suffering. It weathers the storm. We read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross. The joy set before him. What joy could take someone to the cross? It's the joy that Jesus knew was ahead. The joy that we can all look forward to for those of us who trust in Jesus, who have chosen to follow God's path. It's the joy of resurrection. Because Jesus went to the cross and rose again, we have the joy of knowing that we are alive forever. That death itself, the greatest enemy this world has ever known, has been defeated. And whilst I our, our earthly bodies die, uh, we will one day be resurrected with Jesus. And that is joy. That is joyful. We will look back on these times and there will be like a drop in the ocean compared to the everlasting joy that we will be experiencing in the presence of God. Of course, the angels, when they bring the message of good news, of great joy to the shepherds, they are experiencing that very uh, presence of God uh, in the heavenly realms. And, and they're coming uh, fresh from heaven to bring that joy and impart it to the shepherds, telling them that, that the King of Kings has just been born in the stable uh, just down the hill in Bethlehem. They can go and actually visit him and see him. And that invitation is the same for us today. It's the same for you, that you can go and visit the King of Kings today. Because one of the amazing things that the Bible uh, shows us uh, and reveals to us is that the God didn't leave us alone when Jesus went back to the Father in heaven. He left his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit who can introduce us to Jesus anytime, anywhere, any place. And the invitation is there for you to experience Jesus' joy today. It might mean ripping up your old foundations that were shallow and digging deeper into a new foundation in Jesus, building your life on Jesus Christ. But there's no better foundation to build your life upon. When the storms come, uh, the Jesus joy will survive. So why not explore uh, a new life with Jesus? Why not reflect on whether your foundations are strong enough? for the storms that are inevitably going to come. Why not ponder that joy? The weary world can rejoice because we have a joy that is found in Jesus that is everlasting. God bless you and I pray that you would continue searching for joy this Christmas. What difference does my life make? Thank you. <laughs> Why do things that are so bad for us taste so good? Hey, hey Siri, Siri, do you, do you pray? pray? I don't have an answer for that. How can I live life to the full? What can I really trust? What's my purpose? What do you think happens when you die? You're going straight to the gulags. Does anyone hear my prayer? What's for dinner? What will make me happy? Why don't good things last forever? What is God really like? Does anyone else even ask themselves these questions? Hey everyone, I've got an amazing Alpha Online group here. A better place to ask life's big questions. Ask Alpha.
having this service together today. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you to those who made it happen. And a final Christmas blessing. May the light of God make you unafraid. The power of God protect you. The joy of God heal you. The grace of God bless you and keep you truthful now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.